our heavenly King, the Comforter, Spirit of Truth, who art everywhere present and fillest all things, treasure of blessings and giver of life, come and abide in us and cleanse us from every impurity and save our souls, O oh, good one. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. O oh, Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. <coughs> Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Mercy. For the peace from above and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, for those who enter with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our Metropolitan Tikhon, for our Archbishop Benjamin, for the honorable priesthood, the diaconate in Christ, for the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this country, its president, for all civil authorities, and for the armed forces everywhere, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this city, for every city and country, and for the faithful dwelling in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For seasonal weather, for abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for travelers by land, by sea, and by air, for the sick and the suffering, for captives and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Come, memory dear, most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious, Lady Theotokos, never Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life unto Christ our God. To thee, O Lord. Run to the earth, all glory, honor, and worship to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. God, dear, most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious, Lady Theotokos, never Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life unto Christ our God. Thine is the majesty, thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Oh uh -huh. 
again and again in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. God, memory, dear, most holy, most pure, most blessed, and glorious Lady Theotokos, never Virgin Mary with all the saints. Let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life unto Christ our God. To thee, O Lord. Without a good God, love us mankind, and feed we send of glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen.
Peace be unto all. And to thy spirit. Wisdom. Thou proclaim and honors in the sixth tone. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest 
which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. For every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can have compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray, since he himself is also beset by weakness. Because of this, he is required, as for the people, so also for himself, to offer for sins. And no man takes this honor unto himself, but he that is called by God, as was Aaron, so also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. As he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. After thy spirit, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thou hast purchased a whole God is our King before the ages. He has worked salvation in the midst of the earth. Attend, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be unto all. The readings from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Let us attend. The Lord said. Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. Christ is in our midst. He is in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, we have come to the midpoint of great and holy Lent. And before us is the tree of life. The tree that was held back in the Garden of Paradise has now been opened to us. As we just heard in the Tripartium, the flaming swords that held closed the gates to Eden have been quenched by the wood of the cross. So before us, we have the life-giving cross to refresh us, to nourish us, to vivify our souls as we continue in our journey through great and holy Lent. So at this time, I can ask the question to all of us, how's your Lent been? How have things been? Difficult? Challenging? More difficult than before? Uh, so many ways in, in physical fastings, 
uh, which is difficult, and then also interior fasting, which is infinitely more difficult. You know, the fasting of the soul, the reining in of the passions in order to live the life that God has called us to live. Uh, you know, a, a funny little anecdote just to share. Um, one time I was visiting um, Archbishop Benjamin when he was a priest in uh, Los Angeles, and I was with my mother. And so we came together, and he, he looked at my mother and said, my, what a big cross you have. And then he looked at me. <laughs> so his, his joke was the truth. It was the truth. We are, I am a big cross for my parents that she, she bore. <clears throat> but it's a cross that she bore with joy. She bore with great joy. You know, Father Thomas Hopko says the following. It is not enough for Christians to believe in the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. It is not enough for us to preach Christ crucified. It is not enough for us to bow down before the cross and to decorate and venerate and kiss it at church services. Christians must take up their cross in their own lives. We must be co-crucified with Christ in order to share in his glory and to experience even in this world the beauty and power and the peace and the joy of the kingdom of God. So I want to repeat that last sentence that I said. We must be co-crucified with Christ. So what Arch, which Archbishop Benjamin shared with my mother, I as being her cross, the cross that was given to her in her life, she bore, she took up. She <clears throat> did the best of her ability to raise myself and my brother, take care of her husband, uh, her family, all the things that are of uh, our daily life. We need, that is our cross in our life. What is handed to us, what is in our midst, this is the path that God has given to us and we take it up with joy, we take it up with zeal. Because we know that God has given everything in our life providentially for our salvation. For our salvation. Now it's easy for us to be overcome by many things, to have a negative attitude, negative perspective, uh, and then be to become despondent and despairing of what is taking on in our life. And that's one way. That's one way. But the the the, the church is to inspiring us, illuminating our mind to have a new perspective on that. That what is given to us is for our salvation. So I'd like to share with you from uh, <coughs> St. Innocent of Alaska, uh, who he died in Moscow as the Metropolitan of Moscow. Uh, he wrote a book while he was in Alaska for the natives. It's called The Indication of the Way of the Kingdom of Heaven. The Indication of the Way of the Kingdom of Heaven. And it's so profound and so beautiful in how simply he describes and talks about this passage that we heard today from Mark about taking up our cross. St. Innocent says the following. Jesus said, Whosoever wishes to follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. The first duty, therefore, is to deny oneself. To deny oneself means to give up one's bad habits, to root out of the heart all that ties us to the world, not to cherish bad thoughts and desires, to suppress every evil thought, to avoid occasions of sin, not to enter, not to desire or to do anything out of self-love, but to do everything out of the love for God. To deny oneself, according to St. Paul, means to be dead to sin, but alive to God. So we are called to deny ourselves, deny ourselves first, as St. Innocent is mentioning to us. Next, a Christian's second duty is to take up his cross. The word cross means suffering sorrows and adversities. To take up one's cross means to bear without grumbling everything unpleasant, painful, sad, difficult, and oppressive that may happen to us in this life. To bear our cross. You know, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our Master, He revealed to us in the Garden of Gethsemane how difficult it is to pick up one's cross. He prayed three times to his father to take this from him, this cup that he was about to drink, which was laying down his life in the most hideous form of torture of the day. To lay down his life in this brutal form of torture for the life of the world. In his humanity, he sweated blood. That's how difficult this process is. But he did that to show us that we can follow and emulate him. He has the victory. He is the one who laid himself down voluntarily, laid, uh, laid his life down upon the cross to give us life, and we can now emulate that self-sacrificing uh, self love 
because he is the victor, and we want to co uh, reign in that victory which he has given to us. So is it difficult? Yes, infinitely difficult, but we can do it. All things are possible to those who believe, believe in our Lord to give us help and strength to take up our cross and to lay down our life for the love of God and the love of neighbor. So St. Innocent continues, he says, Thus, whether anyone offends you, or laughs at you, or causes you grief, sorrow, or annoyance, or you have done good to someone, and instead of thanking you, he rises up against you and even makes trouble, or you want to do good, but you are not given the chance, or some misfortune has happened, such as sickness, or with all your activity and untiring labors, you are suffering from want and poverty, and are so hard pressed that you cannot make ends meet. Or besides that, you are in some personal difficulty. Bear all of this without malice, without grumbling, without criticism, without complaint. That is, without regarding yourself as offended, and without expecting any earthly reward in return. But bear it all with love, and with joy, and with courageous strength. Love, joy, and courageous strength. All that comes and befalls are us in our life. And so far, we have spoken about exterior crosses, but there are also interior crosses. The interior crosses can be found at all times, and more easily often than the exterior ones. You have only to direct your attention to yourself and examine yourself with a sense of repentance, and a thousand interior crosses will at one time present themselves to you. We can never see the condition of our inner self in all of its nakedness or vividly realize its dangers without special grace and help from God. Because the interior of our soul is always hidden from us by our self-love, prejudices, passions, worldly cares, and delusions. And if sometimes happens to us that we see the condition of our inner selves, we only see it superficially and no more than our reason and conscience can allow us to, can, can show us. But when the Lord is pleased to reveal to us the state of our soul, then we feel sharply that our hearts are corrupt and perverted. Our souls are defiled, and we are merely the slaves of sin and passions, which have mastered us and do not allow us to draw near to God. We see that even our supposed good deeds are mixed with sin and are not the fruit of true love but are the products of various passions and circumstances. And then we most certainly suffer. Now you see what interior crosses are. For some, these crosses are oppressive, prolonged. It all depends on a particular person. But whoever wants to be cured will bear anything in order to be free. Interior crosses are sometimes so burdensome that the sufferer can find no consolation whatsoever in anything. All this can happen to you too. For whatever position you may be and whatever sufferings of the soul you may feel, do not despair. And do not think that the Lord has abandoned you. No, God will always be with you and will invisibly strengthen you even when it seems to you that you are on the very brink of perdition. God will never allow you to be tired and tempted more than he sees fit. Do not despair and do not be afraid. Do not despair and do not be afraid. With all submission, surrender totally to Him. Have patience and pray. He is always our loving Father. Even if He permits a person who has suffered to, uh, even if He has, even, excuse me, even if He permits a person who has surrendered to Him to fall into temptation, it is only in order to make Him realize more clearly in His own impotence, weakness, and nothingness. To teach him, the person, never to trust in themselves. And to show that no one can do anything good without God. And if the Lord leads a person into suffering and lays crosses upon him, it is only to heal his soul, to make him like Jesus Christ, and perfectly to purify his heart in which he himself wishes to dwell with his Son and the All-Holy Spirit. What a marvelous text. And this is just a, a reading on this portion. It's a very small book. 
But if you haven't read it, I highly recommend you to read it. Because in this was laid out in the indication of the way of heaven is how to pick up the cross. As he said, deny yourself, take up the cross. All these things that we suffer, either voluntary or involuntary, if we have the proper attitude, the proper way of receiving, because everything that comes to us is a gift from our Father. Everything is a gift for our salvation and for our healing. And then nothing that comes into our experience will take us away from the love of Jesus Christ and His Father and His Son. It will actually do the opposite. It will galvanize us closer to Him, make us uh, rely more on Him, allow ourself to not be um, full of pride, uh, lacking humility, lacking obedience, trusting in ourselves. We're not to trust in ourselves. We're to trust in our Father. The relationship is Father to Son. He is the Father of the cosmos. He is the one who's created us and He loves us, and He will not uh, uh, neglect His children, neglect the prayers of those who call upon Him. And as St. Innocent says, He will not give us anything harder than we can bear. But dear brothers and sisters, we do not bear it alone. We do everything in community. Everything in the church is together. So when a person suffers, we suffer with them. When a person rejoices, we rejoice with them. We long to love and to be loved, and this is what we do in community with one another. And so we gladly endure the crosses that have been given to us for what reason? Is it a masochistic reason that we're going to suffer just because we want to suffer? No. The whole point of the cross is medicinal. To heal our souls so that two things can happen. We can love the one who loved us first. God, our Father, loves us first. He reveals true love in His Son who laid down His life on the wood of the cross, making it the tree of life, budding forth the fruits of the Holy Spirit, which we partake of and partake in His body and blood. And we love our neighbor. <clears throat> in John, we hear that a new commandment is given to us. But what is this new commandment? The new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you. That you also love one another. This is my commandment, is what Christ tells us. That you love one another as I have loved you. The new thing that is revealed in this commandment is the revelation that God himself is love. God himself is love. It is the revelation, it is this revelation which is scandalous to lovers of power and ridiculous to lovers of wisdom that God manifests himself as love by dying in human flesh, our human flesh, upon the cross for the life of the world. This is the scandal to all humanity which does not believe in our Lord or believe in the power of his death and resurrection upon this cross. So for Christians, what is a stumbling block and a scandal to others is our life. The cross is not uh, a only the instrument of torture. It is now the glory of Jesus Christ who reveals himself upon it. For taking upon himself all the sins of the world and all the evil and hatred which his own creation now rails against the one who created them, he shows boundless infinite love by stretching out his hands to embrace those who have done this to him. Praying to his Father for our forgiveness. Their forgiveness and our forgiveness. Because how many times do we, my dear brothers and sisters, come and participate of the tree of life, and five minutes later, we're already sinning. We're already doing what uh, we're called not to do. And in a sense, we sin greater than Adam and Eve because they were innocent and knew not what they were doing. We know what we're doing. We're consciously sinning, and we are now persevering during this time of Great Lent to overcome our passions, not of our own accord, but by allowing the Holy Spirit to work in us, give us the grace that we need to overcome it. So the cross is in our life, dear brothers and sisters. The cross is in our life. I, I encourage you and implore you, reorient your mind to them. Thank God for your crosses. crosses. Thank Him for the crosses in your life. Have Pray to, to God that He will give you the grace to be grateful for them and then to embrace them, to pick them up, to deny yourself, to, to follow after Him so that nothing will be put between you and the love of God. The cross that he has given to you, you accept with all uh, grace and humility, and you love as best as you are able. Taking upon yourself this, this cross so that you may be healed. That you may be healed. Now to end uh, today, my homie is the following uh, the party, which says the following. Shine, O cross of the Lord, 
illumine the hearts of those who adore you with love inspired by God. We embrace you, the only hope of the world. Through you our tears are wiped away, and freed from the snares of death, we pass over into everlasting joy. Reveal your beauty to us, O Lord, through the cross. Help your servants who ask for mercy and faith. Bestow upon us the fruits of abstinence. Glory to Jesus Christ. Let us say with all our soul, with all our mind, let us say. Lord have mercy. Lord Almighty, the God of our fathers, we pray thee, hearken and have mercy. Lord have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to thy great goodness, we pray thee, hearken and have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. We pray for our Metropolitan Deacon, for our Archbishop Benjamin, for priests, priests, monks, deacons, and all of the clergy, for the brethren in Christ. pray for this country as president, for all civil authorities, and for the armed forces everywhere. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. We pray for the blessed, ever-memorable, holy Orthodox patriarchs, and for the blessed, ever-memorable founders of this holy church, and for all our fathers and brethren, the Orthodox that part us like before us, who lie here and everywhere. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Here we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, visitation for the servants of God, Metropolitan Paul, Metropolitan John, held in captivity, all those suffering in the Middle East, seminarians and their families, for Rebecca with child, Dolly with child, Jesse, the brethren in this holy temple, and for the pardon and remission of their sins. Here we pray for those who bring offerings and do good works in this holy and venerable temple, for those who labor and those who sing, and for all the people here present. Await thy great and rich mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Well, thou art a merciful God, of us mankind, and lead we sin of glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Pray to the Lord, ye catechumens. Let us the faithful pray for the catechumens that the Lord may have mercy on them that he may teach them the word of truth, that he may reveal to them the gospel of righteousness, that he may unite them to his holy, catholic, and apostolic church. Save them, have mercy on them, help them, and keep them, O God, by thy grace. Bow your heads unto the Lord, ye catechumens. Bow with us, they may glorify thine honorable, majestic name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. All catechumens depart. <coughs> depart, catechumens, all that are catechumens depart. Let no catechumen remain. Let us, the faithful, again and again in peace, pray unto the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy in us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Wisdom, front to thee, our dwell glory, honor, worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy in us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Wisdom that guarded always by thy might, we may send up glory unto thee, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages.
Those who miss the rivers the chairman to the prize will be here to life for trains and allies, I don't know if he cares. We will see the king of all comes visibly a born right here coast and Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let us who miss the rivers and the chairman will see the thrice holy him to life for trains and allies, I don't know if he cares. We will receive the king of all comes visibly a born right here coast and Alleluia, Alleluia. Let us who miss the rivers and the cherubim will sing the thrice holy hymn to the life of Queen Trinity and all this other earthly cares. And we will receive the King of all who comes visibly and born by the Jericho's. Hallelujah. Let us who miss the rivers and the cherubim will sing the thrice holy hymn to the life of Queen Trinity and all Beatitude Teeth on Archbishop of Washington, Metropolitan of All America in Canada, His Eminence Archbishop Benjamin, Bishop of San Francisco, the Diocese of the West. May the Lord our God remember his kingdom always, now and ever, and to ages of ages. All Orthodox bishops, priests, deacons, those in monastic orders, may the Lord our God remember his kingdom always, now and ever, and to ages of ages. This country, its president, all those in civil authorities and armed forces, may the Lord our God remember his kingdom always, now and ever, and to ages of ages. The sick and the suffering servants of God, especially Metropolitan Paul, Metropolitan John, held in captivity. Those who are suffering from wars, calamities, natural disasters. May the Lord our God remember his kingdom always, now and ever, and to ages of ages. Those who have fallen asleep in faith and hope for the resurrection to come. May the Lord our God remember his kingdom always, now and ever, and to ages of ages. You and all Orthodox Christians, may the Lord our God remember his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. That we may receive the King of all who comes in complete our prayer unto the Lord. Lord For the precious gifts now offer that us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, for those who enter with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. That the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us ask of the Lord. Grant us, o Lord. An angel of peace, a faithful God, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask of the Lord. Grant us, o Lord. Pardon and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask of the Lord. Grant us, o Lord. All things that are good and profitable for our souls and peace for the world, let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. That we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance, let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. A Christian ending to our life painless, blameless, and peaceful, and a good defense before the dread judgment seat of Christ, let us ask. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos, never Virgin Mary, with all the saints. Let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life unto Christ our God. 
O Lord, our God, who has created us and brought us into this life, who has shown us the ways to salvation and bestowed on us the revelation of heavenly mysteries, Thou art the one who has appointed us to this service in the power of Thy Holy Spirit. Therefore, Lord, enable us to be ministers of Thy New Testament and servants of Thy Holy Mysteries. Through the greatness of Thy mercy, accept us as we draw near to Thy Holy Altar, so that we may be worthy to offer to Thee this reasonable and bloodless sacrifice for our sins and for the errors of Thy people, having received it upon Thy holy, heavenly, and ideal altar as a sweet spiritual fragrance. Send down upon us in return the grace of Thy Holy Spirit. Look down on us, O God, and behold, this our service. Receive it as thou didst receive the gifts of Abel, the sacrifices of Noah, the whole burnt offerings of Abraham, the priestly offices of Moses and Aaron, and the peace offerings of Samuel, even as thou didst receive from thy holy apostles this true worship. So now in thy goodness accept these gifts from the hands of us sinners, O Lord, that having been accounted worthy to serve without offense at thy holy altar, we may receive the reward of wise and faithful stewards on the awesome day of thy just retribution. Through the compassion of thy only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together thine all holy, good, and life creating spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Peace be unto all. Through thy spirit. Let us love one another, that with one mind we may confess. Adores the doors in wisdom, let us attend. Stand and rise, let us stand with fear, let us attend, that we may offer the holy oblation in peace. Grace our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with thy spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord. existing one master lord god father almighty and adorable it is truly meet and right and befitting the magnificence of thy holiness to praise thee to sing to thee to bless thee to worship thee to give thanks to thee to glorify thee the only truly existing god and to offer to thee this our reasonable worship with a contrite heart and a spirit of humility 
For thou hast granted us the knowledge of thy truth, who can utter thy mighty acts, or make all thy praises known, or tell of all thy miracles at all times? O Master of all, Lord of heaven and earth and of all creation, both visible and invisible, who sittest upon the throne of glory, and beholdest the depths, without beginning, invisible, incomprehensible, indescribable, changeless, O Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great God and Savior, our hope, who is the image of thy goodness, the seal of thy very likeness, showing forth in himself, be, O Father, the living word, the true God, the eternal wisdom, the life, the sanctification, the power, the true light, through whom the Holy Spirit was revealed, the spirit of truth, the gift of sonship, the pledge of future inheritance, the first fruits of eternal blessings, the life-creating power, the fountain of sanctification, through whom every creature of reason and understanding worships thee and always sings to thee a hymn of glory. For all things are thy servants. Thou art praised by angels and archangels, thrones, dominions, principalities, authorities, powers, and many I cherubim. Round about thee stand the seraphim, one with six wings and the other with six wings. With two they cover their faces, with two they cover their feet, and with two they fly, crying one to another with unceasing voices and ever resounding praises, singing the triumphant hymn, shouting, proclaiming, and saying. With these blessed powers, O Master, who lovest mankind, we sinners also cry aloud and say, Holy art thou, truly most holy, and there are no bounds to the magnificence of thy holiness. Thou art gracious in all thy deeds, for with righteousness and true judgment thou hast ordered all things for us. When thou didst create man by taking dust from the earth and didst honor him with thine own image, O God, thou hast set him in a paradise of delight, promising him eternal life and the enjoyment of everlasting blessings in the observance of thy commandments. But when man disobeyed thee, the true God who had created him, and was deceived by the guile of the serpent, becoming subject to death through his own transgressions, thou, O God, in thy righteous judgment didst send him forth from paradise into this world, returning him to the earth from which he was taken, yet providing for him the salvation of regeneration in thy Christ himself. For thou didst not turn thyself away forever from thy creature whom thou hast made, O good one, nor didst thou forget the work of thy hands, through the tender compassions of thy mercy, thou didst visit him in various ways, thou didst send prophets, thou hast performed mighty works by thy saints, who in every generation were well pleasing to thee, thou didst speak to us by the mouth of thy servants, the prophets, foretelling to us the salvation which was to come, thou didst give us the law as a help, thou didst appoint angels as guardians, and when the fullness of time had come, thou didst speak to us through thy Son himself, by whom thou didst also make the ages, who being the radiance of thy glory, and the image of thy person, upholding all things by the word of his power, thought it not robbery to be equal to thee, the God and Father. He was God before the ages, yet he appeared on earth and lived among men, becoming incarnate of a holy virgin. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being likened to the body of our lowliness, that he might liken us to the image of his glory. For as by man sin entered into the world, and by sin death, so it pleased thine only begotten Son, who was in the bosom of thee, the God and Father, who was born of a woman, the holy Theotokos, never Virgin Mary, who was born under the law to condemn sin in his flesh, so that those who were dead in Adam might be made alive in thy Christ himself. He lived in this world and gave us commandments of salvation, releasing us from the delusions of idolatry. He brought us to the knowledge of thee, the true God and Father. He obtained us for his own chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, Having cleansed us in water, sanctified us with the Holy Spirit, he gave himself as a ransom to death, in which we were held captive, sold under sin, descending to the cross into hell, that he might fill all things with himself. He loosed the pangs of death, he arose on the third day, 
having made for all flesh a path to the resurrection from the dead, since it was not possible for the author of life to be a victim of corruption, so he became the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, the firstborn of the dead, that he might be himself truly the first in all things. Ascending into heaven, he sat down at the right hand of thy, of thy majesty on high, and he will come to render to every man according to his works. And as memorials of his saving passion, he has left us these things which we have set forth according to his command. For when he was about to go forth to his voluntary and ever-memorable and life-creating death, in the night in which he gave himself up for the life of the world, he took bread into his holy and pure hands, and having shown it to thee, the God and Father, having given thanks, blessed and hallowed it and broken it, he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, for the remission of sins. Likewise, he took the cup of the fruit of the vine, having mingled it and given thanks, blessed and hallowed it, he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death, you confess my resurrection. Therefore we also, Master, remembering his saving passion and life-creating cross, his three-day burial and resurrection from the dead, his ascension into heaven, and sitting at the right hand of thee, the God and Father, and his glorious and awesome second coming, thine own of thine own, we offer unto thee on behalf of all and for all. O God, pray for your sin and have mercy on me. O Lord, send the most holy spirit upon the apostles and the third hour. Take them back to the most of the good Lord. New heaven, I should pray unto thee. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew my spirit within me. O Lord, who send the most holy spirit upon the apostles at the third hour, take him not from us, O good one, but renew him and I should pray unto thee. Yes, now, Lord, in the presence of the Holy Spirit from me. O Lord, who send the most holy spirit upon the apostles at the third hour, take him not from us, O good one, but renew him and I should pray unto thee. Therefore, most holy Master, we also, thy sinful and unworthy servants, whom thou hast permitted to serve at thy holy altar, not because of our own righteousness, for we have done nothing good upon the earth, but because of thy mercy and compassions, which thou hast so richly poured out on us, we now dare to approach thy holy altar, and offering to thee the antitypes of the holy body and blood of thy Christ, we pray thee and call upon thee, O holy of holies, that by the favor of thy goodness, Thy Holy Spirit may come upon us and upon the gifts now offered to bless, to hallow, and to show this bread to be the precious body of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And this cup to be the precious blood of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Shed for the life of the world. Amen. Amen. And unite all of us to one another who become partakers of the one bread and cup. In the communion of the Holy Spirit, grant that none of us may partake of the holy body and blood of thy Christ for judgment or condemnation. Instead, may we find mercy and grace with all the saints who through the ages have been well pleasing to thee, ancestors, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, teachers, and every righteous spirit made perfect in faith especially for with our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and Ever-Virgin Mary.
Remember, Lord, the people here present and also those who are absent for honorable reasons. Have mercy on them and honor us according to the multitude of thy mercies. Fill our treasuries with every good thing. Preserve their marriages in peace and harmony. Raise the infants, guide the young, support the aged, encourage the faint-hearted, reunite the separated, lead back those who are in error, and join them to thy holy Catholic and apostolic church. Free those who are held captive by unclean spirits. Sail with those who sail. Travel with those who travel by land and by air. Defend the widows, protect the orphans, free the captives, heal the sick. Remember, O oh God, those who are in courts and mines and exiles and harsh labor, those in any kind of affliction, necessity or distress. Remember, O oh Lord, our God, all those who entreat thy great loving kindness, those who love us and those who hate us, those who have asked us to pray for them, unworthy though we be. And remember all thy people, O oh Lord, our God. Pour out thy rich mercy upon all of them, granting them all the petitions which are for their salvation. And remember thyself, O God, all those whom we have not remembered through ignorance, forgetfulness, or the multitude of names, since thou knowest the name and age of each, even from his mother's womb. For thou, O Lord, art the helper of the helpless, the hope of the hopeless, the savior of the storm, the haven of the voyager, the physician of the sick, be all things to all men. O thou who knowest each man and his request, his home and his need, Deliver this city, O Lord, and every city and country from famine, plague, earthquake, flood, fire, sword, invasion by enemies, and civil war. Among the first, remember, Lord, the attitude, Tikhon, Archbishop of Washington, Metropolitan of All-American Canada, His Eminence, Archbishop Benjamin, Bishop of San Francisco, and the Diocese of the West. Grant them for their holy churches and peace, safety, honor, health, and length of days, rightly to divide the word of thy truth. Grant us seasonable and healthful weather. Send gentle showers upon the earth so that it may bear fruit. Bless the crown of the year with, begot with thy goodness. Prevent schisms among the churches. Pacify the ragings of the pagans. Quickly destroy the uprisings of heresies by the power of thy Holy Spirit. Receive us all into thy kingdom, showing us to be sons of the light and sons of the day. Grant us thy peace and thy love, O Lord our God, for thou hast given all things to us. And grant that with one mouth and one heart we may praise thine honorable majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. And the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ shall be with you all. And with thy spirit. Have to remember all the saints again and again in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For the precious gifts offered and sanctified, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Let our God who loves mankind, receiving them upon his holy, heavenly, ideal altar, as a sweet spiritual fragrance will send down upon us in return his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help us, save us, and mercy us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. That the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us ask of the Lord. And An angel of peace, a faithful guide, a gardener of our souls and bodies, let us ask of the Lord. And Pardon and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask of the Lord. And all things that are good and profitable for our souls and peace for the world, let us ask of the Lord. That we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance, let us ask of the Lord. A Christian ending to our life, painless, blameless, and peaceful, and a good defense before the dread judgment seat of Christ, let us ask. Having asked for the unity of the faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us spend ourselves and one another and all our life unto Christ our God. O oh, our God, the God of salvation, do thou teach us to thank thee worthily for the benefits which thou hast performed for us and still performest with us. Having accepted these gifts, O oh, our God, do thou purify us from every defilement of flesh and spirit and teach us how to perfect our sanctification in thy fear so that receiving a portion of thy holy things with a pure conscience, we may be united with thy holy body and blood of thy Christ. Having received them worthily, may we have Christ dwelling in our hearts, and may, be a way, and, and may we become the temple of thy Holy Spirit, 
Yea, O our God, let none of us be guilty of these thine awesome and heavenly mysteries, nor be infirm in soul and body by partaking of them unworthily, but enable us even to our last breath to receive a portion of thy holy things worthily as a support on the road to eternal life and an acceptable defense of the dread judgment of thy Christ, that we also together with all the saints who through all the ages have been well pleasing to thee may become partakers of thy eternal good things which thou hast prepared before, for those who love thee, O Lord. And make us worthy, O Master, that with boldness, without condemnation, we may dare to call on thee, the heavenly God, as Father, and to say... the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Peace be unto all. And with thy spirit. Bow your heads unto the Lord. To thee, o, Lord. o Master, Lord, Father of compassions and God of every consolation, bless, sanctify, guard, strengthen, and confirm those who have bowed their heads to thee. Withdraw them from every evil deed, apply them to every good work, and make them worthy to partake without condemnation of these, thy most pure and life creating mysteries, for remission of sins and for the communion of the Holy Spirit, through the grace and compassion and love toward mankind of thy only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thine all holy, good, and life creating spirit now and ever and unto ages of ages.
I believe, O oh Lord, and I confess that thou art Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am first. I believe also that this is truly thy own most pure body, and that this is truly thy own precious blood. Therefore I pray thee, that have mercy upon me, and forgive my transgressions, both voluntary and involuntary, both word and deed, and in the knowledge of our ignorance, and make me worthy to partake of thy honor.
Orthodox Christians, members of the church, those who have fasted for food and drink this morning and have had confession recently may approach the chalice. If you're not an Orthodox Christian and like to learn more, please see me after the service. We'd be glad to welcome you into our communion. In the fear of God, with faith and love, draw near. Blessed is he
thine inheritance. Christ, let us worthily give thanks unto the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy in us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. Asking that the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life unto Christ our God. Thee, o Lord. We thank thee, O Lord our God, for the participation in thy holy, most pure, mortal, heavenly mysteries which thou hast granted us for the good and sanctification, healing of our souls and bodies. Do thou, O Master of all, grant that the communion of the holy body and blood of thy Christ may be to us for a faith unashamed, a love unfeigned, an, in an increase of wisdom, the healing of soul and body, the repelling of every adversary, the observing of thy commandments, and acceptable defense at the dread judgment seat of thy Christ. For Thou art our sanctification, and to Thee we send up glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Let us depart in peace. In the name of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, who blesses those who bless Thee, and sanctify those who trust Thee, and save Thy people, and save Thy inheritance. Preserve the fullness of thy church, sanctify those who love the beauty of thy house, glorify them, and return by the divine power, forsake us not, and put our hope in thee. Give peace to thy world, to thy church, and to thy priests, to all those in civil authority, to all thy people, for every good gift and every perfect gift from above, coming down from thee, the Father of lights, and unto thee, do we send up glory, thanksgiving, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord, and for the forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord and forever forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord and for the forevermore. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let me have victory and be judged. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And I don't sing so to sing together. I saw 
upon it his grace and love for mankind, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory to thee, O Christ, our God, and our hope, glory to thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and Christ, our true God, through the prayers of his most pure mother, the holy, glorious, all the honorable apostle, evangelist, John the theologian, all the holy apostles who are father among the saints, Basil the great, Archbishop of Caesarea and Cappadocia, of <coughs> St. Sophronius, patriarch of Jerusalem, whose memory we celebrate today, the holy, righteous ancestor of God, George Kimonon, of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, for he is good and loveth mankind. Blessed feast on this wonderful midpoint of great and holy Lent, where we are refreshed by the life creating tree of the precious cross of our Master. And thank you to Peggy Solana for your direction and to all my choir members for your excellent singing and your prayerful singing, which makes the services so beautiful and, <coughs> and uh, uplifting. And to all of you gathered here today, welcome to our visitors and guests. Please stay with us afterwards for fellowship a time together. Um, at this time, the commemoration that we have is for Leilani and Charlie uh, for your anniversary. So happy anniversary. Give our uh, big hugs and kisses uh, uh, to you and Charlie. And we'll pray for you at this time anyways. A prosperous, peaceful life, health, further and self, blessed things. Grant, O Lord, thy servants, Leilani and Charlie, who celebrate the anniversary and preserve them, O Lord, for many years. God grant you many years. God grant you God grant you many, many, many years. Once again, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. Uh, <coughs> so at this time, please be seated for a few announcements. <coughs> so, very simply, this week uh, we have, on the fourth week now, we have our uh, coming to the end of our pre-sanctified liturgies. If you haven't made them, please come. So Wednesday and Friday, we'll have our pre-sanctified liturgies. Parish Council on Saturday. Great Vespers as usual on Saturday. And then uh, Divine Liturgy um, as well. This evening, um, Lenten Vespers is taking place at St. Salas, uh, Serbian uh, Orthodox Church, which is just up the street, five minutes from here. So we'll be able to attend. Please do so. Um, and then I'll be sending out an email uh, this week with... Uh, uh, sign up sheets for lots of tasks. So now we're going to be getting uh, uh, in high momentum getting ready for our Lord's great Pascha. And we have our catechumens who will be entering the church. Uh, we'll get ready to uh, clean the temple, make it brilliant and, and beautiful, and prepare for uh, this great and wonderful feast. Um, thank you. Do you have any uh, announcements for the choir? Uh, choir, choir, don't forget your um, uh, rehearsal on Saturday the 25th. 
Saturday the 25th. Saturday the 24th. Or 24th. Sorry, 24th. Sorry, 24th. Okay. It's, it's on the calendar. <laughs> it's on the calendar. Um, so those are the... Uh, oh, actually, before that, um, I'd like to... A, a huge and special thanks to the Wisniewski's, uh, Stacy and Jeff, for leading uh, the and, and setting up the Lenten retreat yesterday for the children, which was so beautiful. Uh, we had uh, uh, Mrs. Dunnan there helping, uh, Elaine, uh, uh, Mrs. Daphnis helping. Uh, there's also the, the minors and uh, Dahlia, uh, Vinnie King was uh, worked with the children. Caroline uh, also um, was with us. So uh, many, many people that made this retreat so beautiful. It was really wonderful. That a lot of positive uh, feedback from the children, and they had a, a great time. They got to go through the church to look at the icons and to see which icons had crosses on them, and then to make their own uh, their own uh, crosses themselves. So we have them up here for display. So after we venerate the life-giving and precious cross of our Lord, the children can come up to the Iconostasis and take their own cross home. It has a little um, hanger on the back so you can put it up on your wall and, and enjoy this, this cross, this feast. So hopefully we'll be able to do this again uh, many, many more times. And I'm so glad it was such, such a well-attended event and it was very, very beautiful. Um, so thank you again to everyone who participated in that and helped plan it. Um, those are all the announcements for now, so please uh, we'll come up in groups uh, to venerate the cross together. Uh, uh, it's two prostrations, and then come kiss the cross, and then one more prostration. Be sure not to step on anyone's fingers, and uh, we'll listen to the prayers of Thanksgiving. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee, our God.
the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> now and ever and unto ages of ages. Prepare to our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us. Amen.